Hello, welcome again to part three of our ongoing series, The Mindset That Is Better Than Yoga. I am glad that we have yet another privilege to continue on this um, series. Let us share a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we bless and we honor you and we thank you. O oh Lord, we give you all the praise and adoration. How awesome and glorious are you, O oh Lord, highly lifted up above all things. We thank you that in the mighty name of Jesus, thou hast kept us, that despite the works and the deeds of the enemy, Lord, you continue to reign and you continue to reign in our lives. We thank you for each and every one of us, Lord, who connects with us, and all your people all over the continent and the nations and from the nations of Africa. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to receive from you yet again. Father, we ask that by your spirit you will minister to us. You will reveal your hidden mysteries unto us. That with understanding we will walk with you. The Bible says that for they that war, they must war with, with, uh, with understanding. For without understanding, Lord, we lack the basis to continue in the pursuit of our destiny. And we thank you for the privilege. We thank you for the blessing. And in all our hearts, Lord, we say thank you. Blessed be your holy name. May your name be adored and praised forever. Amen. Amen. We thank God again. And we'll continue from where we stopped or left off last time in the last time and in fact part one of this series of mindset and a uh, mindset that is better than yoga all we are trying to establish is that in this current challenging season of covid 19 and massive turbulence across the world we must pay more attention to our mind and our mindset because we want to establish that it is critical and absolutely critical in our ability to remain on top of life and to overcome the challenges of life including COVID. In part one we established the fact that this is a very challenging time but the mind has always been important and even before corona came in and and massive disruptions came in many people had had challenges in their mind to know how to understand things how to think about things and how to overcome challenges this is a long age issue and now this problem is exacerbated because of covid 19. we talked about what some researchers have done and we ended up trying to explain the, comp uh, the composition of man in itself. What is the spirit? What is the body? What is the soul? And we establish what is within each and every one of these three realms of man. What, is, what makes up the soul of man? What makes up the, soul, uh, 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 the spirit of man? And what makes up the body of man? And what do they do? We established all these principles about uh, um, 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 the consciousness of man in all these three realms. The spirit being where we are conscious of God, we are conscious of the spirit. And, and in the soul, we are self-conscious. In the body, we are world-conscious. All of these things were explained. We went on in part two to establish the operations of the mind. How the mind it, 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 it operates when one is doing yoga and when um, other kind of um, spiritual activities are, happen, are happening how do you know whether it's of God whether it's of the evil spirit and, and what are the conditions that enable any of these to operate for me this was really insightful and I'll encourage you to check on all of those part one and part two remember part two we also try to establish how the mind relates to the conscience the will the heart the the, um, the emotions and, and all of this 
we explained all of that and we ended up to uh, on the basis that the mind is actually central it is the eye of the heart it is the gate to the will or it is a major influencing factor in what you will to do or you will not to do and it is essentially a central and crucial part of every man and therefore we must take care of it now in this part three we want to emphasize on some key spiritual principles that are needed for anyone who will be able to live to accomplish destiny to understand these are not all the principles but these are part of the essential principles and we bring you 11 of them today and that's all we are going to do in this short time we have together and it's my prayer that we, we would obtain the deep understanding of the way God has designed man and, and the set principles that when we have and we put to good cause we will be able to sustain an effective mindset and we will be able to build on our lives no matter what comes our way and be able to prevail this is absolutely essential so let us start what is the first principle we want to establish and it is the principle of how man was formed in the beginning so before man became sinful or fell to sin the soul was actually um, governed by the spirit so when you go back to genesis in the beginning when god created the heaven and the, and the earth and, and all that and uh, essential and eventually created man we understand that god made man a living soul and man could communicate with God and man could govern the affairs of the garden of Eden that God would establish a communication with them at the east of the garden of Eden this setup is how God preferred man to be and in the context of what we are discussing, the setup was that man was God conscious, had a spirit in him that could know. Because we know that the Bible says Adam knew that God, when God was coming. And God communed with man and visited man. So when God was more or less in the physical presence, of man in the garden of Eden we know that man was aware of God man also had a conscience of not doing what God has told them not to do so the conscience would prick Eve when the serpent would approach her and we know that man could think man had emotions therefore adam rose up and he says behold the bone of my bones that was an expression of his emotions and he will to obey god and therefore they lived in the garden adam named the animals in the garden upon his own will he decided and they lived in that fashion and in summary God designed man so that man was God conscious through his spirit interacting and communicating with God's spirit and that dominated and ruled man's soul such that all Adam and Eve were prepared to do to think to feel to act upon were all under the guidance or governance of his spirit or their spirit so the spirit ruled the soul and therefore when they went what they did naming the animals and all that 
were also ruled by their will, their own self-will, which is part of their soul. So God established that first of all, the spirit would take leadership or predominance over of man's being, governing the soul, and the soul in turn governing the body. This is a principle we need to understand carefully so that when we go about our livelihoods, we will be sure whether we are under the original guidance and plan of God for us or not. And this is a key principle to understand that in the beginning, God meant that man's spirit, which interacted with his spirit, governs the soul, which includes the mind, the will, and the emotions. Then we will to do in the physical world that which pleased God. That was God's original establishment of man. Secondly, or second principle is that man is many times, as I've even mentioned already, is called a living soul. The Bible has this scattered all over. The soul is the Bible says in the New Corinthians, in the in the New Testament that what would man gain if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? We in Christendom today say we win souls. So man is predominantly referred to as a living soul. But what does this mean to be a living soul? It means that the soul is the pivot of the entire being of man. And therefore, man exercises his will, which is part of his soul, freely. Man defines himself mainly by the soul, not necessarily by the spirit. You, you, you can better explain the conduct of man by what he thinks, by, by his emotions, and by his will. And man is centrally what he wills to do. Remember the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. And your thinking faculty is in the mind which is in the soul that is why man is predominantly a living soul the living part of it has got to do with whether it is alive to the spirit of god or it is dead to the spirit of god so god made man a living soul not just a soul so when we say we win souls, we are all we are saying is that we 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 are we are we we are bringing the soul faculty of man to be alive to the spirit. So this is essential to understand why man is predominantly called soul, or God will refer to man as having created him a living soul because he breathed into him. And when that breath of God, which is which signified the spirit of God, it activated the spirit of man. And made man's soul become alive to God. Remember, the soul has its own life. So you can be dead to God, but the soul, you can still have a life of the soul. The Bible makes us understand that the soul has its own livelihood, which makes you know or, or have a self-consciousness. And to add to that, the body also has its own life. And the life of the body or the life of the flesh is in the blood. So when blood is flowing through man, and blood has not stopped flowing or being pumped through the heart, then you know that the man is alive and when you are conscious of yourself we know that your soul is alive and when you are truly alive as a living soul we will know when your soul is under the governance of the spirit so this is why man is called a soul or a living soul 
it is because the soul is the central point, the pivotal point of any man. Therefore, we must take a critical care of your soul. Number three, the soul, uh, uh, number three, the mind is the battlefield of every person. How do we know this? The Bible says, or explains for us to understand that the enemy, the devil, tempted Eve to sin. By what? By overtaking her through the channels of a darkened mind. Or, in other words, the enemy or the serpent darkened the mind of Eve and through that got him. In terms of Adam, he got uh, and got her, sorry, her to will to eat the fruit. In terms of Adam, the enemy got him through his emotions for Eve. Therefore, Adam willingly ate the fruit against the command of God. The Bible makes us understand from the book of Genesis chapter 3 that when the enemy came, in, in verse 1, just picking parts of it, from Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 7, it says, when the enemy came, it says, Has God indeed said that you shall not eat of every fruit of the garden? He posed the question to the mind of Eve. And then the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree, but of the fruit which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat of it or touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. What was he doing? The serpent was sowing knowledge into the mind. Was sowing knowledge into the mind. And God knows, God has knowledge, that in the day you eat, your eyes will surely open, knowing good and evil. That when you eat this, first of all, have the knowledge that you will not die. And when you have this knowledge, know that you have a knowledge that makes you like God. You will know good and evil. So the enemy got to Eve by dealing with the mind. So this has always from the beginning been where the enemy tries to deal with God's people. God's race. And therefore, it doesn't matter how spiritual you are as a child of God or how challenged you are in life. How much prayer you are praying, you have need to take good care of your mind. Because that is the battlefield. We remember the Bible says in uh, the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter... Um, let me just confirm. Chapter 10. Verse 3 to 5. The Bible says, For we walk not. I say, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down strongholds, imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity. Every thought, thought to the obedience of Christ. And having and, and, and bringing to judgment all disobedience when we have had or met all obedience. This establishes the fact that yes, we are in the flesh, yes, we have God in our spirit and we relate with God, but we war or we battle or the place of great challenge even whilst here is the mind therefore the mind is a stronghold for the enemy as he from the beginning dealt with if from the mind so let us understand this third principle that our mind is the battleground so when you wake up and you hear news that covid-19 is um is bringing economies down is taking lives and all of that 
the first thing that happens to you is that something is introduced to your mind. And how you, you take it and deal with it determines whether you will be able to win the battle or not. Which battles? Battles that has got to do with your own life, your own family. People begin to worry about a possible loss of, of job and contracting the disease and all of that. It is the spirit of fear that injects that idea to man's mind. The same way the devil through the oppression of the serpent injected an idea into the mind of Eve. And the eventual aim is to get you to will, to take a certain course. That will not benefit you. That is why it will be difficult for anybody to accuse the devil because Adam and Eve tried to accuse the devil. But remember, that in the first principle, God gave you and I our own free will to be able to exercise it according to what we will. And therefore, the principle we establish here as the third principle is that the mind is the battlefield. It is not your spirit necessarily that is the battlefield. It is not your flesh, sickness that is the battlefield. It is not your family that is the battlefield. It is not your inability to, 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 to get a job necessarily that is the battlefield. When you win this battle, then you eventually win all the eventual battles that we see in life. The mind is the battlefield. Therefore, all attention must be paid to it. The principle number four, the mind is not completely renewed when we are saved. Remember, principle number one talks about when God created man in his perfect state. Principle number two, we talk about the falling of man. Um, I'm sorry, principle number two, we still talk about how man is defined as a soul. Then number three, we talked about the falling of man and what made them the, uh, and why the mind is the battleground. Therefore, we must take it serious. And in number four, we establish the principle that indeed at salvation, what happens? At salvation in simple terms, God gives man a new life, which is a new life to the spirit of man. I.e. the conscience comes alive. The, 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 the intuition comes alive, by which we know of God comes alive. And our spirit, our heart, our worship, is, is made alive. We can relate with God. We can worship Him. Our our heart becomes active. Because the heart is the connection for the spirit and the soul. So, God gives us a new life, which is spiritual life. The Bible said that when man is a, 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 a born again in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, he, he, say he becomes a, 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 a new person. And behold, all things are new. What does the Bible mean? All things are new means all spiritual things are new. As we know, we don't have a new body. And your mind doesn't all of a sudden become new. You don't forget all the things that are in your head automatically. Your mind doesn't change from being, if you used to be in the art field, you don't now become a scientist. Because maybe your original God had meant you to be a scientist. No. It doesn't happen that way. So at salvation, we receive a new life, we receive a new heart, but not a new mind. Or the soul is not totally renewed. It is therefore a work in progress. Many people think all things are new, so everything is new, and they go back and live a casual life, and they wonder how come they are not able to, for instance, overcome sin. If you used to you used to think up wrongly, you don't all of a sudden begin to think right. It's because the mind is not new, a, 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 a renewed completely at new birth. It received the capacity to be renewed, but that is a work in progress. It's only your spirit that has been renewed. That is the life God gives you, eternal life. And your heart becomes activated such that it can relate with the soul. 
going to cruise their mind and therefore it is man's part to work on this and to allow the spirit of god through the heart to renew their mind remember the bible says in ephesians chapter 4 if you read from verse 21 to 24 quickly i read the bible says if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him that is christ as the truth is in jesus speaking to the ephesians church that is ephesians chapter 4 he said that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust he said you put off if you have received of him if you have believed in you have come into christ then it is your duty to put off according to the former conduct where you conducted your things according to how you thought as a man thing so is he how you willed how you donated your emotions to certain things you put them off it is not god who put them off so we this is established here the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts it says and be renewed in the spirit of your mind so this is what god does for us he renews us according to the spirit of our mind therefore the spirit working on our mind god will renew us in the spirit renewed in the spirit therefore having effect on the mind but you put off your your conduct your thinking and all of that which is not of god and that 24 it says and that you put on the new man which was created according to god in righteousness and in true holiness so for you to live in righteousness and in true holiness you have work to do when you are saved so please don't take it for granted that it is all done when you are born again and you are, you are, your things are new and you will never go back to sin. No, you have work to do on your mind, on your emotions, and your flesh will not change. If you need to take care of your body, you will still need to take care of it. Your thinking will now be aligned according to the ways of God. But you have to do it. So for instance, how to do it is to, is to get deep in the word of God. Be prayerful. Let, 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 let the word of God let renew your mind. Take effect on your mind. Number five, when one truly turns to the Lord or post salvation, when you are truly turned to the Lord, you now begin to believe in the heart, not in the mind. And therefore you are justified. You can refer to Romans chapter 10 verse 10. You believe in the heart. So though things do not make sense, though COVID-19 is closing down economies and companies are coming down and all that, you know that the Bible has said that. In this world, there will be tribulations. In the book of John, you read chapter 14, 15, 16, 17, when Jesus gave his, 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 his prayers, his last advice to the disciples before you go to be, to be killed or to, to die for us. He already told us that in this order with tribulations, but be of good cheer. So when COVID-19 comes, you are because your mind is renewed, like you have been saved and you are growing in the Lord. You know about the you know how the God talks about the situation. That they say, though there was famine in the land of Egypt, the children of Israel who were in Goshen, they were exempted. So you know that you are a child of Israel. Because you are a child of Abraham through whom all blessings manifest. Therefore, it is minus you. Therefore, your mind is solid and you are able to, 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 to do what you need to do. You are able to think solidly. Even when you are being laid off, you know that it is it is for a purpose. Though they meant it for evil, it, it, it shall be. It shall, it shall, it, 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 the, the Lord will turn it for your good. And, and so and so when you, you sit in prayer to God, you are not asking god oh why me why me while well, you're asking god lord i thank you for this for you caused me to will and to do your good pleasure you caused me to triumph always because your mind has been renewed in the spirit by the preaching of the word of god for instance so you believe in the heart not in the physical things not in what the news media tells you and you are able to prevail no matter what because you have grown in with understanding that when you were born again, it was not case closed. It was case began. Now you put off the old man. You put on the new man. And you believe with the heart. Therefore, we understand that the heart is the engine room of man, of man where the spirit and the soul are interacting. 
but the mind is the fuel that powers the engine room or the engine and therefore everything we are supplying through our mind influences what goes into the heart but we believe through the heart because it is where we are able to bring the spirit and the soul together and interact with with god and therefore the bible says guard your heart for out of it are all the issues of life therefore what it means is that you have a duty to protect the things that come through your mind and affects your heart or that influences what you do you guard it protect it and let it go through the, the funnel or the channel of God's Word and, and God's Spirit to, to flash out negative thoughts it is your duty you need to do this consistently you need to take a thought through this news I have heard it is introduced fear in me but the Bible says that God has not given me the spirit of fear therefore According to the word of God, I reject fear. I, 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 I refuse to, 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 to think negatively. I cast down every imagination of fear and I live in the power of a sound mind. And, and you confess this and you enforce this, enforce this until it has left you. And you know, you have to do this constantly because we guard our hearts constantly. So, this is a principle of living that we have to also note. Wait. Now, Number six, and from here it will be faster. The mind is powerful, and without man's acceptance, the mind cannot be controlled or manipulated. Know that if allowed the devil to deceive her, the devil, there was nowhere the enemy forced Eve. There's nowhere the devil is forcing any of us. If we don't give up, the devil will not have a way. Therefore, have no. Uh, 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 inactivity or passivity in your mind don't let your mind lose don't let your mind wander around take control let your life be in your hand by the influence of the Spirit of God remember this you cannot your mind cannot be dominated unless you allow it that is the important principle number seven by examining every instance in the Bible or in the New Testament in particular sorry as I know there was nowhere that God operated with man without the full consciousness of man's having his uh, uh, full consciousness of himself or having control of his mind God never gave a revelation to anybody in a manner that the person was out of his mind or not in charge of his mind if you read the entire New Testament, you will not find one. And this is a principle that Christians must understand. Whenever you don't have the full functionality of your mind, you know that it is not God who is leading you that way. For instance, in us, the book of us of the apostles, when the Holy Spirit came down, Peter rose up and he said, Ye men of Jerusalem, you consider that we may be drunk with wine, but see that it is only the third hour. So what we saw was a Peter who was full of the Holy Ghost and was fully conscious. He hadn't lost his mind in any way. He hadn't lost a full function of his mind because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Last time in part two, we dealt with how the Spirit of God operates and how evil spirit operates. Please take uh, the opportunity to, to go and listen to that if you haven't. But God will never, he never appeared to uh, and Joseph who was married to Mary the mother of Jesus and Joseph didn't uh, uh, lose consciousness Joseph was all the time losing when Christ arose the women who went to the tomb and and, uh, and he met them they their mind were clear in fact they were communicating with Jesus all throughout all throughout the visitation of the Spirit of God to Cornelius and, and to Peter to go and visit Cornelius the Spirit taking Philip uh, to to meet the Ethiopian, you know, all of them they they, they were they were clear in their mind. They were clear in their mind. This is a principle everyone must understand. You will never, whenever you are losing con uh, uh, control of your mind to to an operation of a revelation or a spiritual experience, know that it is not of God. Number eight, God begins working in man, even to today. 
by working through man's spirit because the spirit of god remember in the book of second corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 he says now that spirit is the lord or now the spirit is the lord and wherever the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there is access to god and when the spirit of god has endured us and we are born again we have a, a living soul we obtain the freshness of god's life through man's spirit and he through the spirit continue to illuminate our mind stirring our emotions and causing us to exercise our will in that manner over the body this is how god operates with us today principle number nine without the guidance of the holy spirit the intellect alone or the mind alone intellectualism alone knowledge of this life alone can be dangerous and it can be extremely risky why because it will surely confuse the issues of right and wrong now people begin to say all manner of things that uh, uh, truth is relative and, and, and all of these things uh, they, they, they are only operating with their mind and their intellectualism and that is very dangerous because it has no control of the spirit of God so please watch out when you engage in, in unending intellectual arguments it will never end in a way many intellectuals uh, intellectual arguments usually don't end up anyway because it can slide man into dangerous territories and it can really become alarming people have used intellectualism to do many many great things some good some bad but remember the book of john chapter 3 verse 6 onwards in particular it said that which is flesh is flesh that which is spirit is spirit that the flesh or the oppressions of the of, of of this world can do some seemingly good things but it, it doesn't make it right the only way to know that which is right is the source if it is of god if it is of god not if it is good or bad number 10 the mind of a spiritual man is sustained by the spirit should the spirit fall under siege its power its power cannot reach directly to the mind of that person and so the mind will immediately lose some control and it may lose it all so that is why spiritual death can be gradual if you are no more at any point in time being governed by the spirit of god operating in your spirit it means that you are losing control to the enemy and the loss of control give access to the enemy automatically so please understand that your mind must be under the supervision and guidance of the spirit of god in you consistently 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 and number 11 another spiritual principle we want to wrap up with today is that whatever is obtained in the spirit must be preserved and employed by the mind so you cannot say that you have received a, a, a revelation from god and, and 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 you are going to do it only spiritually he says who you see that put up a building or build a house and does not first sit down to count the cost read the book of proverbs it talks about knowledge understanding knowledge understanding knowledge is of the mind understanding is of the heart you cannot understand uh, you cannot operate in in, in uh, 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 ignorantly we must be aware if god has given you a business to do if you feel comfort if, if, if you have a mindset to establish a business understand it if god has given you a duty explore that dig deep into it and understand it that is why we are not just preaching the word of god but we are bringing understanding of africa where it's coming from where it's going and, and and where it's heading towards to the continent and to god's people so that with understanding will be useful to god it is my prayer that this knowledge and understanding we have received these principles will guide us to have a robust mindset in the next session we are going to talk about what allows or what will allow the enemy to take control of your mind in full scope wherefore you will know 
the signs that you are sleeping or not sleeping to the enemy in full scope. God bless you. Our Father in heaven, we bless and we adore you. Take all the glory. May your name be adored forever and ever. May all the honor be to you. We thank you for this time. We thank you for Africans. We thank you for the nations of Africa. We know that we will see the Af Africa continent and its people advance in our lifetime. We bring you all the glory, adoration, and praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please subscribe to stay on, 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 on course and share with others. And I believe that we will see a new generation of highly effective Africans. God bless you. Have a lovely time. Bye.